Good evening, everybody, and thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share with you one story that I really like. And the way I see cancer will be treated in the future, and if I can dare, the way I see cancer is already treated now. So I said, my name is Vince, and I work as professor here at the University of Helsinki in the Faculty of Pharmacy. But one thing I would like to say straight away before we even start, I would never would have done anything if it wasn't for a great research group that is close to me and we work together every day and together we, we have a mission and this and our mission is how do we get cancer cured and our vision is that uh, we will get this done by using our own body now a few years ago i had uh, i would say uh, or we had together a genius idea, and follow me on that. I'm sick today, I have a very bad flu, if I have to be honest, and this is true. But if I would ask you, I mean, all, everybody in this room has had the flu, right? And you feel, I, I, sick, I feel a little bit sick, but how long time would it take for my body to get the virus that is giving me the flu out of my body? Please two, three days. You will all know that in a couple of days, I will be feeling way much better, right? Now, our idea it was, why is that? Because we are, our body is so very well trained to identify the viruses and to clear the virus out of it, right? We are very good at it. But the big difference with the tumor is that when we have a tumor instead, our body or our immune system, if we want to say it in the right word, is not that good in identifying the tumor so the tumor can grow. So we had an idea, why don't we take viruses and then we cover the viruses, the common virus that give us the flu, we cover those viruses with a piece of tumor. When these viruses are giving back to the patient, the body of the patient see the virus and they immediately start to react against the virus because it's a virus. But because the virus this time is covered with the pieces of tumor, our body gets confused and start to kick out the tumor too as the tumor would be a virus. We call this uh, uh, um, technology Peptigrad and uh, since then we have been working on it. But the story I want to tell you today is a little bit more fresh than that. This is how we started. But the question today is, can we make this cancer vaccine personalizable? Can we make something that is specific for that person in that particular moment? And this is the story I want to tell you today. So we all start, and this is what we do every day in our lab. It all starts with a patient. We go to a patient and we take basically the tumor out of this patient. We and others have uh, uh, developed way to grow the tumor outside of the body, like the tumor will be in the body. And we call this technique organoids or tumor organoids, or in our case, immune tumor organoids. So they grow if there was a real tumor in a real body. Then we take these uh, 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 organoids and then we are able to identify very specific piece of this tumor, which are called tumor antigens. Uh, uh, and those small piece of tumor, they really specifically identify that specific tumor of that specific person in that specific moment. Of course, when we do it, we have a long list of thousands of these small signature or small fingerprint. So what we do, we use uh, the power of computers, uh, artificial intelligence, and very complicated mathematical formal that I have no idea, uh, uh, to try to sort out among all these tumor pieces, what are the ones that are real meaningful? What are the ones that could really give that specific patient a clear cure and a clear vaccine? So we uh, identify those which are the best tumor fingerprints, and then we do what we are very good at. We load those tumor fingerprints on top of regular pathogens. Those can be viruses, as I said at the beginning, but they can also be other kind of pathogens like bacteria. So things that we know that our body can recognize very well. As I said, 
body does not recognize tumor, but body can recognize very well pathogens. This is how we have evolved. But when the tumor pieces are covering the pathogens, here we go. We can see them and we can really start fighting the pathogens and the tumor simultaneously. Of course, in the lab, we cannot do more than uh, uh, validate our platform in animal models. So basically use uh, 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 animals to validate what we have been finding. But, but I'm not happy about it because uh, uh, my, my small uh, uh, dream is to do something that will impact the society, will do something that it does not boost only my career, which is completely useless for all of us, uh, uh, but to do something that is instead that I can see the results outside of the lab, or something that is impacting the life of everybody else. So the way we thought a couple of years ago that this will accelerate is to create a spin-off company that will be in charge of taking this technology out of the lab in the clinic. So we have created a spin-off company, this is a very nice story, which we'll tell you another time. And this spin-off company is basically working night and day for about two years now and is almost ready to take this technology to the clinic actually as soon as next year. And they have just announced also a big partnership with some other American company that works on the field. This is just as a note, I'm very proud to, to, to share with you that this company was chosen as successful example uh, 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 in, slash, uh, uh, in slash a couple of years ago. And uh, this is more or less what I wanted to share you. If, but last things that I want to remind you that can be also useful, that uh, in a few days from now, there will be a very nice event called Slash Y Science or Y Science, a side event of Slash, where basically we will, uh, there will be a lot of these stories on how scientists have taken their basic knowledge and make something that has impact society. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I was clear enough. Thank you, Vince. A great presentation once again. You're very um, welcome. You have such amazing ideas, but I want you to really uh, take us through the one that changed everything once again. Is it really true? Can one say that your like, original idea was to disguise tumors? Yes. Yes. As so yeah, th this was basically our like uh, my first thought, and uh, you know I've always been very interested on virus-host interaction. So how our body interact with with viruses, and and then I realized when I start working on cancer that you know one thing we fail all the time is to recognize cancer because cancer comes from us. And it's very difficult. It's so self that it's very difficult to to basically react against. So I thought, like, why don't I combine these two things that I'm, you know, in a way very interested in and see if it works. So we tried and it worked much better than I thought. That's very exciting and encouraging. But now you talk a lot about tumor-specific signatures. Uh, can you tell us again what they are and why they are so important in your new idea? Yeah. We all know that tumors is so heterogeneous and the, it, although the same tumors, let's say prostate cancer, is so different from one person to another, but even within this, the same person, the tumor is changing all the time. And sometimes when the tumor changes, makes some mistake and makes something that looks a little bit different than the rest of the other body or the rest of other tissues. We are able nowadays to identify those new signature and take them and use them against the tumor. So basically we take advantage of tumor's mistake. That sounds very exciting as well, it like is, a really cunning is. plan of defeating cancer. Um, you are a scientist first and foremost, above everything. Always. Always. And I remember when I met you for the first time, you said that, ah, slush and the business world and having a company, I will never do that. But now you do have a company. Uh, can you tell us why you actually started one when you weren't supposed to be starting a company ever? Uh, I know you're right, I said it. Uh, but on the other hand, at some point, I realized that that would have been is the easiest way to collect enough funding to see whether or not whatever we have done in the lab works for real. I mean, my obsession is, can we change the life of a single person? And if you can, that's already plenty. Yes. Um, 
You are also really passionate, as we just heard, about science having a societal impact. Uh, why do you think it's important for researchers them, themselves to be active in achieving that kind of impact? Yeah. Of course, we, I mean, from one side, I want obviously to cure people, to impact directly their own life, but there is also another layer of this. I mean, I really believe that scientists should reconcile or reconcile whatever it said uh, whatever, uh, uh, with society. I mean, I, I really feel strong that at some point society is going on one direction, scientists are going in the other direction, they are locked in, in their lab doing amazing things but nobody knows about it. And then uh, with internet, Facebook and all these things, at some point I felt like, whoa, this is now dangerous because everybody can say, ah, oh, by the way, vaccine you know, gives autism. And people believe it just because somebody said it, although there is no data or whatsoever. So I thought, like, it, whose fault is it? It's probably scientists' fault because they are not speaking loud enough. So we should get out from our lab, break the wheel of academia, go back to non-scientist audience and start to teach that what, whatever we do, uh, 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 we try to do it right. And we don't, I don't think we know the truth but uh, we know the truth of this specific moment. It might change later on, but... And have the best uh, possible tools to discover as much of the truth as possible, exactly. I Exactly. With uh, your own money, and that's what uh, I'm also very sensitive about, that uh, we do things with your own money. So you, as like, you know, stakeholders, should be very aware of what we do and should demand that we do right things in order to make our world a better world, uh, not really detaching and thinking, oh, but, you know, they're just doing, you know, wrong thing and they are locked in their lab. So I, I'm very passionate about it and I feel very strong that we should, recon you know, get together again. I think very strongly that that is the right idea. You also have been talking about creativity in science lately. Yeah. What yes. does that mean to you? Well, uh, uh, this comes from the obsession of uh, uh, looking at the amount of data that scientists publish per year, which is millions, and the amount of patents that scientists publish per year, which is hundreds probably, and the amount of invention that are really able to touch our life, which is even less. So I'm thinking, are we wasting our time and your money? So how can we really do it? And then I discovered that probably scientists, they are not creative enough. We have gotten into a loop where we need to be productive, but if you try to be productive, you're probably not uh, uh, be courageous enough. So how do we solve this problem? And, and when I start studying about it, I realize that, you know, we lack creativity. We should dare more and start looking at the world upside down, start, start looking at ideas with a different perspective. I mean, we should really uh, get back to our originality and creativity. And this is what academia is for, to try things that people have never tried before, to walk in territories that nobody has really walked before.